各位同学，大家好，欢迎收看英语口译第二十二讲。我是主讲老师张秀珍，旁边的是美国老师新奇。Hello, welcome to our program. 我们今天这一讲主要谈的是说，呃，清朝末年，严复他翻译大师，他提出来“信达雅”这三个翻译原则，那至今还是受到广泛的讨论。啊、呃，我们今天的重点主要谈这个 “elegance” 这个“雅”到底该怎么样谈？我们知道说，人类是社会动物，那语言它也是社会的产物。那既然是社会的产物的话，它就受到各种不同因素的影响。就是你像你不同的年龄，啊、呃，不同的性别，不同的社会阶层，像劳工阶级跟呃高等知识分子，我们讲说蓝领、白领，还有男女，像尤其日本语的话，他们这个男女阶级各种讲话都是不一样的。所以这个雅，信达雅的话，事实上并不是这么单纯哈，在不同的。呃，时间、地点、不同的阶层，他用的语言是都不一样的，这是我们口译工作者要慎重考虑的。好，我们现在先请美国老师帮我们朗读课文。To be elegant or not to be elegant, language register. Yan Fu, a famous scholar in Qing Dynasty, proposed. Three principles of translation in 1896.、Uh, that is accuracy, intelligence, and elegance. Since then, these three principles have been in discussion frequently. In this lecture, we are going to examine the third principle he proposed, such as elegance. Human beings are social animals. Regarding language use, usually our languages vary according to different social communicative situations. Therefore, to be elegant or not to be elegant has to be decided by the original speech and the situation. Good translators. Interpreters should not only know the elegant formal level of usage; they should also be familiar with the informal and casual usage. And more important, they should know when to switch the language level according to different situations. For example, in Chinese. The following groups of characters are used in different situations, as in English, "my father" is usually used in a formal situation. "Daddy" or "my old man" in a casual situation, and "daddy," "papa," "dad" are more affectionate and intimate usages. To be elegant or not to be elegant is always a choice made according to when, where, and who we are talking to. 好，我们现在来看一下 keyword。Elegant, elegant 是形容词，优美的、优雅、漂亮的。请看 example. Elegant, the movie star wears an elegant dress to accept her Oscar at the Academy Awards ceremony. 好 ，movie star 的电影明星 wear an elegant dress， 穿了一件很优雅的礼服 ，to accept. 来接受 Oscar Award， 奥斯卡金像奖，在这 Academy Award Ceremony， 这是奥斯卡颁奖典礼。好，我们看下一个 keyword， scholar， scholar 是名词，学者。好，我们看一下 example， 
Scholar. A good scholar doesn't always make a good teacher. 好，一个好的学者 doesn't always make a good scholar， 并不见得会成为一个好的老师。有的人他满腹经纶，可是不会教书。好，我们看下一个 keywords. Accuracy. Accuracy 是名词，正确。我们是从 accurate 这个形容词转变过来的。请看 example. Accuracy. Accuracy is very important when interpreting at a court proceeding. 好，这个 accuracy 我们讲说信达雅，这是指信，就正、准确、正确，它是非常重要的。在你 interpreting at a court proceeding， 你在做法庭询问口译的时候。这个准正确、准确是非常重要的。好，我们看下面一个 keyword。intelligibility， 这是一个名词，理解性、通达、明了，也就是信达雅里面的达达。请看 example。intelligibility， intelligibility is one of the three principles brought up by Yang Fu。More than a century ago, and is still a golden principle for translators and interpreters to follow. 好 ，intelligibility 这个信达雅的达，它是严复在一百年前、一世纪前就提出来的三个翻译原则之一。那至今仍然受到口译跟笔译工作者。奉为金科玉律。好，我们看下一个 keyword。Frequently, frequently 是从形容词 frequent 加上 ly， 从形容词就转变词性变成副词。它的意思是频繁的、屡次的、经常的。我们看一下 example。Frequently. Some speakers frequently use phrases such as. You know, but it's not a good habit to acquire. 好，有一些演讲者，他们讲话的时候，通常会一再使用这个句子，像是 You know, you know. 我有一个朋友就是这样子哈。But it is not a good habit to acquire. 我们养成什么习惯是用 acquire habit， 那这个习惯不是好习惯，不要养成。好，我们看下一个 keyword。Communicative, communicative 是从动词 communicate 转变过来，去一加上 i v e 就变成形容词，它是沟通的、交谈、言语的。我们看一下 example. Communicative, communicative language courses have recently replaced. The traditional grammar translation methodology. 好 ，communicative language courses 就是 courses 语言教学课程。它现在是用沟通式的语言教学课程。Have recently， 它最近已经 replaced 取代了，取代了什么呢？传统的 traditional grammar translation。就传统，它是用文法 grammar translation 是翻译；传统教学方式 methodology 是教学方法，是呃文法翻译是现在新的潮流是沟通式的教学方法。好，我们看下一个 keyword。Casually， casual 这个字是轻松随便的，是形容词，非正式的。我们正式叫 formal， 非正式叫 casual。请看 example。Casual. People often dress more casually on weekends and when on vacations. People, 人们，他 often 经常是 dress more casually， 穿着比较轻松随便。什么时候呢？是 on weekend， 在周末的时候。And when on vacation， 还有你度假的时候，度假不会穿的正经八百的，穿的是很舒适的便服。好，我们看下一个 keyword. Switch, switch, 
switch 这个字是动词，或是动词的话当做扭转，然后名词的话当做开关。来，我们看一下 example。Switch. We have to turn on a switch before we can use many modern appliances in the kitchen. 好 ，we have to， 我们必须要 turn on， 我们打开开关，哈，就用 turn on a switch。Before we can use， 在我们可以使用，使用什么呢 ？Many modern appliances， 我们可以使用很多呃现代化的器具。In the kitchen， 就是在厨房里面，这现代化器具都是要用电的，我们必须要 turn on a switch， 把这个电器开关打开。好，我们看下一个 keyword。Affectionate, affectionate 这个字是从名词 affection 这个变来加上 ate 就转换成动词，呃，从 affection 这个名词加上 ate 就转换成形容词。我们看一下 example. Affectionate, he wrote an affectionate letter to the woman he loved. 好，他写了一封信，什么样的信呢？是 affectionate， 就是很温柔的，充满了浓情蜜意的信，给谁呢 ？To 用这个介系词哈 ，to the woman， 这个女人 he loved， 他深爱的这个女人，写了一封很温柔、浓情蜜意的信给她。好，我们看最后一个 keyword， intimate， intimate 是亲密的，请看一下 example。Intimate. In nonverbal communication, usually an American will keep a personal acquaintance at an arm's distance, but for intimate relationships, the distances are much closer. 好，我们看这个 intimate 的例句。In nonverbal communication, communication 是沟通哈。Verbal communication is 口语的 ，nonverbal 就是指非口语。非口语的就是像你的眼神或是距离等等，这是非口语的一种沟通。Usually， 通常 ，an American 美国人他会 keep a personal acquaintance。他会把一个 personal acquaintance， 就是说你平常熟识，不是很熟的，可是就是有数面之缘认识，可是并不是很熟的人，把他是 keep at an arm's distance。把它保持在一个手背的一个距离之外，就不会站得太近。然后 ，but for intimate relationship， 可是，在很亲密的关系的时候 ，distance， 它这个人跟人站的距离就 much closer。所以，非言语的沟通的话，你人站的距离多远，就马上看出来你们彼此的关系是亲密还是生疏。好，我们这个。呃、uh, ，keyword 已经讲解完毕，我们回到前面的课文。美国老师会朗读，我会做解释。To be elegant or not to be elegant, language register. Yang Fu, a famous scholar in Qing Dynasty, proposed three principles of translation in 1896. That is, accuracy, intelligibility. And elegance. 好，要优雅还是不要优雅？言语语言不同的语域。严复，他是在清朝的一个有名的学者。他在一八九六年的时候就提出来三个翻译的原则：信、达、雅。Since then, these three principles have been in discussion frequently. In this lecture, we are going to examine the third principle he proposed, that is, elegance. 从那时候开始，这三个原则就已经经常被人讨论着。我们这个讲次会看看他第三个原则，也就是信达雅的雅 ，elegance. Human beings are social animals. Regarding language use, usually our languages vary according to different social communicative situations. 人类是社会的动物，所以
。语言的运用，通常我们的语言是依照各种不同的社会沟通的场合而做调整变化。Therefore, to be elegant or not to be elegant has to be decided by the original speech and the situation. 所以，到底要不要优雅？事实上，这是要依照原来讲者他的讲话以及风格以及他原来的这个情境来决定。Good translators, interpreters should not only know the elegant formal level of usage; they should also be familiar with the informal and casual usage. 好的，口笔译工作者。他不仅要知道说优雅的正式的语言用法，同时也应该要熟悉那些轻松非正式的语言用法。And more important, they should know when to switch the language level according to different situations. 更重要的是，他们要知道什么时候该把语言的层次。依照不同的语言情境来做转换。For example, in Chinese, the following groups of characters are used in different situations, as in English, "My father" is usually used in a formal situation. 比方说，中文里面“家父”，我老头，我老爹，我爸爸。它是在各种不同的场合里面运用，就像英文里面 "my father" 通常是在比较正式的场合使用。My old man in a casual situation and daddy, papa, dad are more affectionate and intimate usages. My old man 通常是在比较。非正式、轻松的场合 ，Daddy, Papa, Dad， 它是比较呃亲密、有感情的一些用语。To be elegant or not to be elegant is always a choice made according to when, where, and who we are talking to。所以，要优雅还是不要优雅，这事实上是一个选择。我们当初做决定的时候，要依照时间、地点、场合，还有这人，我们到底是跟什么样的人谈？这时候再做不同的语言转换。好，我们现在课文讲解完毕了，我们要看到后面的 exercise。Yang Fu。A famous scholar in Qing Dynasty proposed three principles of translation in 1896. That is accuracy, intelligibility, and elegance. Since then, these three principles have been in discussion frequently. In this lecture, we are going to examine. The third principle he proposed, that is elegance. Human beings are social animals. Regarding language use, usually our languages vary according to different social, communicative situations. Therefore, to be elegant or not to be elegant. Has to be decided by the original speech and the situation. Good translators, interpreters, should not only know the elegant formal level of usage; they should also be familiar with the informal and casual usage. And more important. They should know when to switch the language level according to different situations. Number one, accuracy, A C C U R 
ACY. Number two, intelligibility, I-N-T-E-L-L-I-G-I-B-I-L-I-T-Y. Number three, elegance, E-L-E-G-A-N-C-E. -E. Number four, beings, B -E -I -N -G -E. G S. Number five, according, A C C O R D I N G. Number six, situations, S I T U A T I O N S. Number seven, original, O R I G I N A L. Number eight, situation, S-I-T-U-A-T-I-O-N. Number nine, familiar, F-A-M-I-L-I-A-R. Number ten, switch, S-W-I-T-C-H. 好，我们现在还有些时间，所以我们来看我们的 discussion。那我要来问美国老师他一些问题，因为我们的 Randy 老师他曾经在呃他的教书经验，教过幼稚园，也教过大学哈，所以我来问他说，呃，我们习题里面的 activity， 我来问他说，他假如呃假设他在对一群幼稚园的小孩讲话的时候。他那个语言的用法一定跟在大学教书是不一样的。我请 Randy 老师来帮我们示范一下这两种不同的语言有怎么样不同的呃用语、不同的情境哈。Randy, yes. that uh, I remember that from your teaching experience, you have the experience both teach work as a kindergarten teacher and also college lecturer, right? So that I would like you to. Uh, demonstrate that uh, first, if pretend that you are teaching to a group of uh, kindergarten small children, the language, what language should you use? And then second, next, that switch uh, to the situation to the, say, uh, if the setting is in a college classroom and you are talking to the, say, so-called adults, that the language definitely will vary. So could you demonstrate the two different language register? Right. Well, first of all, mm -hmm. yeah, I have tried different uh, teaching areas such as kindergarten or preschool level, mm -hmm. like you said, and um, but it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. But one experience I remember was at a bushiban. Mm -hmm. Bushiban, of course, is a Chinese word, bushiban. Right, cram school, right. And yeah, cram school, but. Foreigners here, we say bushiban, and mm -hmm. in the English newspapers, you'll see the word written mm -hmm. B-U-S-H-I-B-A-N. 好，所以 Randy 老师他说，对他有过那个不同的教书经验哈。那他也很久很久以前他是教过幼稚园哈。那他现在就说，好，他现在就想说他在补习班教书，他也有过那个经验，他要跟我们谈一下。But I remember one good experience at one bushiban, as I like to call it, where um, the owner of the bushiban thought it good to have small classes. So I had like a class of about five students, preschool level, mm -hmm. so I could get very close uh, physically to them and interact very closely with them. 好，所以 Randy 老师他记得说，有一次在补习班，那个补习班是希望有小班教学，所以小班教学的时候，他有教过一群的小孩子，是大概是幼稚园那个年龄阶段的。So in this situation, I have to reach their level, the children level, and and maybe even try myself. To become like a child,、mm -hmm. so that they can understand me and we can interact. 
，所以要跟小孩子沟通，当然 Randy 老师他的语言就一定要转换成那个小孩子幼稚园小娃娃可以听得懂的，甚至 Randy 老师说他自己也要变得好像自己也要像一个小小 baby 一样，这样才能够容易跟小孩子沟通。So one situation I remember that I enjoyed very much, and the children enjoyed very much, was when I told them the story of the three little pigs. I think it's a pretty famous story. Maybe a lot of people in Taiwan have heard of this. 所以 Randy 老师记得说，有一次哈，他就在那边告诉小孩子一个说一个故事，就三只小猪的故事。他说那一次他自己也讲得很高兴，小孩子听得也很高兴。Or I should have mentioned the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. Uh huh. Right? 还有三只呃小猪，还有一只大野狼。But the, as the story progresses, the big bad wolf wants to eat the little pigs, so he goes to their houses and he knocks on the door. And here I have to sort of act like the child and、mm -hmm. and interact with them, but. They hear knock, 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 and the little pig says, "Who's there? It's the big bad wolf. Let me in." 好，所以那个 Randy 老师就说，讲故事的时候，他自己好像也要返老还童哈，就好像要 act like 一个呃，好像自己也要像一个小孩子一样。他最记得说，那时候就是大野狼去敲门 ，knock, knock, knock， 敲门的时候，然后。呃，小猪就问说 ，Who's there？ 谁在那里？然后他就回答说，我是大野狼。And the little pig says, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then the big what? The big bad wolf says, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. 好，这就是很好的一个表演哈，就是说，他就说叫他离开，可是这个呃大野狼说。我不离开，我要把你的这个屋子吹倒。So we're laughing and the children are laughing, but later the children learn to tell the story. 好，所以这个讲的人很愉快，笑得很愉快，然后听的小孩子、小朋友也很愉快，然后小孩子也学会了自己到时候转述这这三只小猪还有大野狼的故事。But then you wanted to compare with university level. I recall recently teaching a class, and we had a question, like a discussion question.、Uh, do you ever have a problem with business in Taiwan? And this could be small business, like you or I buying some food or buying clothing. In this case, I compared the idea to a movie, Pretty Woman, which would be completely inappropriate for children because it involves a prostitute. 嗯，好，所以他说到大学讲堂的时候的话，他有一次就跟谭说，在这个做生意的时候，就你对台湾的这些那个生意人有什么样的一些问题哈？那学同学有就把这个，他们就慢慢谈谈到了《The Pretty Woman》这个电影里面的情节。那这种的话，完全对小孩子是不适合，因为里面牵涉到有一个妓女哈，所以。这个的时候，他的语言跟着内容都是完全不适合小孩子。好，那我们今天就很高兴跟同学就聊到这边哈，就是说不同的你对大人讲话跟小孩子讲的话，要完全语言内容都要做一个分辨，这是我们做口译工作者要 aware 要常常警觉的不同的场合、不同的语言转换。好，我们今天讲到这里，谢谢各位收看，下次再会。